Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to go ahead and look at average atomic mass calculations. Uh, in a previous video I talked about what average atomic mass is and uh, the basics behind it, but in this video we're going to focus more on the math and the calculations and come up with the origins of the number that's represented on the periodic table. So to do that we're going to go ahead and take a look at silicon. Uh, we have some data here representing three isotopes of silicon and the numbers over here, the 28, 29, and 30, are the mass numbers that distinguish between the three various isotopes for silicon. Uh, the second column has the actual mass represented in atomic mass units or AMUs uh, and then the last column has the percent abundance telling us which isotope is the most abundant in nature. And we can see based on the data that out of the three isotopes silicon 28 is the most abundant with about 92 percent uh, and the other two are pretty small in amount so with that information what that tells us is that we could expect based on the fact that 92 percent of the uh, uh, isotopes are isotope 28 that the mass is going to be very very close to 27.98 and that's how you can kind of use the percentages to kind of quickly uh, get a general idea of, of you know what the answer is going to be so how do we do this uh, step by step it's pretty simple to figure out the average atomic mass we just need to take that percent abundance and multiply it by the mass the actual mass not the mass number but the actual mass of the various isotopes. So this is the general calculation. Percent abundance times actual mass plus percent abundance times actual mass and we continue that process depending on how many isotopes we have. So in this one I have three isotopes so I'm going to carry it out three ways. Okay, or I'm going to do it three times. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that you could use the mass numbers. The mass numbers again are rough estimates. They're usually very close to the actual mass. So if you were to use the mass numbers you're going to get a close answer but you're just not going to get a very specific answer and it's not going to match uh, the number that you would find on the periodic table. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up and we'll take a look at the calculations. Okay, so I've got the math all set up. I have the percentages, the uh, atomic mass units, and they all correlate with each of the individual isotopes. So this would be silicon uh, 28, and this would be silicon 29, and this would be silicon 30. Uh, and then now I'm just going to really just do the algebra. Don't forget that when you're dealing with percentages, that you want to move that decimal place two places over before you multiply it out. A lot of students forget that, or they make a mistake. <clears throat> when the percentage is less than 10 if it's in the ones place they just move the decimal one place you gotta to remember to move it two places so I'm going to do that and set that calculation up okay so I've got that set up I've made all my conversions uh, from percentages to the decimal number or the relative uh, amount uh, and that's the other thing too is you might sometimes see these percent abundances given in relative amounts or relative abundances all that means is that they're just going to give these to you in decimal form already without the percentages in there so they basically divided it by 10. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and continue with the calculation notice that I'm keeping the atomic mass unit unit in here so that I don't forget to put that in my final answer because the average atomic mass should have a unit of atomic mass unit so I want to make sure that I include that in my final answer and I'll continue on. Okay, so simplified the next step and I got the three answers for each of the various isotopes. Uh, the little red underlining is if you're following along with significant figures. Depending on when we, uh, when you are taught significant figures, um, if you don't know significant figures right now, don't worry about it. But if you do know significant figures, that is the digit that's the most uh, significant based on the previous calculation with the multiplication. So that's where I'm going to round to in the next step. So I'll do that. I'll complete the problem here. All right, so when I do this and I add all three of those numbers together, I end up with 28.0882, and I have to round again using the significant figures since I have it to that decimal place. I'm going to round it here, and my final answer when I'm done will come out to 28.09 atomic mass units. If you correlate that with the number on the periodic table, you'll see it's very close to that, if not exactly that number might be off a little bit depending on the periodic table that you're using um, but that would be the average atomic mass for silicon and as we said earlier when we made our prediction we said that 92 percent of it was made up of uh, silicon 28 and so therefore that's why our mass is very very close to 28 uh, because of the fact that there's so much of that one particular isotope okay uh, so there you go there's how you calculate your average atomic masses uh, again keep your steps uh, in, in line and watch your units and if you have not learned significant figures don't worry about that part right now um, but uh, if you want there's a video lesson on significant figures coming up and uh, that will be it I'll talk to you guys later thanks